Good morning, everybody. Um, today we've got a special guest, which is Jake Kenny. Uh, Jake Kenny was one of our uh, students who um, we have to say he's probably the, the fastest person we've ever seen uh, actually achieve a PPL. I think um, you did it in three and a half weeks. Is that correct, Jake? Yeah, three and a half weeks. Yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing stuff. So it kind of opened our eyes to um, what was possible, really. Hmm. So, um, <laughs> what, what made you want to fly in the first place, Jake? What was it that inspired you to fly? Uh, well, I suppose my earliest um, memory memory of aviation was um, going to the Wellsbourne Airfield Cafe with my granddad. And I suppose from there, it's always sort of been in my mind. And then it's just such a unique experience that you can't really compare it to anything else, I suppose. So you were in a very uh, unique um, actual circumstance because you had the Greyburn Scholarship at the time. So mm. I believe that the, the mm. 45 hours was already paid for. Can you tell us a little bit about that, how you got into that, if anybody else is interested in doing it, how, you know, how accessible it was? Yeah, so I literally just Googled sort of flying scholarships and came across the Honourable Company of Air Pilots. So every year, I think there's about eight scholarships um, of 45 hours um, for a PPL. So it's just sort of an online application and then um, interview in London. Um, oh, okay. And they basically give you the summer to complete a PPL, sort of. And how, how long did it take to find out whether you, you actually achieved it or not? Um, it was a few months, I think. So probably a month or two between applying and finding out. But well, You completed the course really, really quickly. Obviously, it's the fastest we've ever seen and it was the basis, the foundation of why we started Fast Track, um, because it really did open our eyes to what could be achieved in such a short space of time. So what was your motivation to finish it so quickly? Um, well, so for me, um, for the scholarship, I'd been to somewhere else at Country Airport before. Okay. Um, and essentially, sort of, they didn't have the dates or availability, so yeah. it kind of worried me because the scholarship did have a deadline. Um, okay. So I moved over to Almat, um, mm -hmm. they had like, a lot of availability um, mm -hmm. and the weather was uh, really good so sort of just naturally sort of um, yeah, yeah you had to, I remember you had a good set of circumstances with the weather yeah um, and, and you seem you know at the time you were you were so motivated to get through it I seem to remember seeing you in the classroom one minute with your head in the book and then coming out of an aeroplane the next minute um, mm -hmm. how did you manage your time to be able to do that um, I suppose um, for me, I just sort of uh, cancelled everything else for that three, four weeks. Sort of, um, my life was flying. So yeah, you pra practically yeah. moved in for three weeks or so, wasn't it? <laughs> it was really good. Um, <laughs> and and we, you know, if you did it all again, is that the way you'd do it again? Did you think it was beneficial to do it so fast? Or? Um, well, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think like that's uh, three, four weeks I remember forever. Like I wouldn't yeah. change it. Um, yeah. I suppose the only thing would be the um, the exams, possibly do those before, because it's quite difficult to fit those in around the... Yeah, the yeah. What parts of the course did you find difficult, if anything? Um, well, I suppose fitting the exams in was um, yeah. probably one difficulty, and I suppose for me, the most challenging part flying-wise was nav, but then also that was the most exciting part, of course. So you said if you did it again, you might consider doing um, the exams first. What... You know, if you had to give one bit of advice to somebody who's already doing their PPL and perhaps they're struggling with it, what, what would that be? Um, I suppose just sort of, if you can throw yourself into it, um, i say it's more enjoyable and also, I suppose it makes it easier if you're sort of immersed in it. So yeah. for me, like, every flight sort of was quite soon after the next. So yeah, not quite continuous and natural progression. I mean, did, did you have many knocks during the training? Were there things that set you back? A bit, or did you just sort of try and brush over it and carry on? Um, there was, I suppose, I suppose there was, but um, I think that's what helped with the uh, sort of the intensity of it was. Yeah. You didn't have much time to yeah. think about it, did you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's, that's fair enough. Um, no, you were only with us for a, a very short period of time, but we have kept in contact since. Um, and obviously you've been into visitors several times. Um, what is it you liked about uh, your time with Alma? So I really like the, um, the small sort of family environment. It was really friendly, like felt quite comfortable, I suppose, compared to sort of the bigger places. Yeah. Felt much more like um, part of sort of a family, I suppose. We try and keep it as friendly as a very small flying school, but try and keep it as professional as a bigger school. So, um, mm -hmm. Now, what, what's next for you? Because obviously, I know you've been um, you've been doing your degree, haven't you? So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so I'm at uni at the moment um, in the first year. So 
doing commercial pilot training with um, air transport. So yeah. from next, sem- next September, I'm doing ground school in um, Oxford for leading edge aviation. So yeah. then I've got one more year of uni and then hopefully the uh, commercial pilot license and instrument rating. So okay. that's brilliant stuff, mate. And um, I know um, we, we've uh, asked you to come flying with us soon. So it'd be, it'd be good to see you again. And uh, I hope you've been coping well with the lockdown and everything else. And uh, <laughs> getting some revision done and things but it's, it's really nice to speak to you again jake and thank you ever so much for, for taking time to come and speak to us on zoom you too thank you yeah, good to speak to you